Did you ever want to do that? Not as a child necessarily, but as a grown-up. I like to think that I'm not the only one. I like to think that it's very important to notice child in grown-ups. Several years ago, I noticed this very childlike nature rise in me. And I had done a wonderful job up until that point to hide, protect, deny even that childlike nature. So when I was walking out of my psychologist's office to my car, my mind, which sometimes thinks in pictures, saw a cartwheel. And it rose. And I was like, cartwheel? About the psychologist's office. I was raised by an alcoholic pedophile. I needed a little help. I actually needed a lot of help. And it was actually what happened before that cartwheel that caused me to call my psychologist, Virginia. Oh, I was hijacked by something, and it was much less welcome. I was house-sitting in my childhood home, and getting ready for work, I reached for the towel, and my breath got caught. And I continued down the hall, and then I realized I was having trouble swallowing. I got to the bathroom and I was experiencing more symptoms. My heart was racing and my chest started to hurt and my breathing was rapid. I had to go to work though. And above anything, I knew how to soldier on. So I stepped into that shower, I closed the frosted glass door, and I froze. I mean to tell you, I froze. I wanted to get out of the tub. Being in there scared me, and I couldn't move. I'm certain that I got out, because here I am, but I remember sitting on the toilet with a towel wrapped around me, very cold and scared. You might think that a psychiatrist would be the best option. It was panic. But I learned early in my healing journey, pharmaceutical, not my friend. The journey was a long one, and I would use different people along the way. And I was bringing back some pieces of my scattered self and my soul. I was getting stronger, but my marriage disintegrated. And one December, I was crying every day. I couldn't stop crying. So, I didn't want to ruin Christmas. It was coming. I called my family doctor, and I said, the Cliff Note version, I'm having a little trouble. He prescribed a antidepressant. I was desperate. I filled the prescription, I took the pills, and I got through Christmas without crying. I also got through Christmas without smiling, without laughing. It's safe to say that I didn't even shed a tear of joy being around my loved ones. Pharmaceutical. I also happened to be in the 3% of the population who experience side effects. People who take this medication will evolve into a firm feeling of side effects. You might feel heart disease, low blood pressure, and uncontrolled bleeding. I called Virginia, explained what was going on, sat down in front of her, and together we decided eye movement, desensitization, and reprocessing. EMDR, a brain science. My eyes watched a moving object as I discussed this new symptom of panic, the distraction. And at some point, the movement stopped, my eyes closed, and I found 
the memory. I was very small. It happened in a tub. And I took that thing that happened, unexplainable, to innocence. It showed up as something even more unexplainable in my adult form. But now I could take that emotion, match it to the correct memory, and I could breathe again. You know, for those of us who've experienced trauma, it's sometimes difficult. That's an understatement. It's very difficult. Where do you start? I didn't start there. I started with conversation. I was 18 when I started. We have to start talking, but everybody's not at the same table at the same time asking, how can I help? We want to bring everybody to the table. By we, I mean my sisters. When we first started talking, we didn't realize that what was happening to one of us was happening to all of us until we were grown women. And then the three of us came to the planning table, a business planning table, and there was even more to work out. It's difficult. This is where it gets tricky. You start to talk, and loved ones, oh, they have such well-meaning behind their words, well-intended words. And it sounds something like, oh, at least it's not happening now. And then sometimes it sounds like, well, it's all in the past. My personal favorite, just get over it. And then psychiatrists have in their arsenal some medications and pills, well-intended. But I'm telling you from experience that this pill that helps subside a symptom two symptoms, five symptoms, whatever it is they are, it doesn't make the story go away. We've learned integration is how to make that happen. So what does work when you start to talk? And you're the person who's listening. How about honesty? I've just shared with you something that probably took your breath away. Say that. Whoa, that took my breath away. I'm really sorry that happened. Or maybe you're noticed you're very angry and you want to avenge my attacker. Let's not do that. But you can say that. Whoa, I'm really angry. I can't imagine how you feel. And the psychiatrist who's listening, who spent years learning and developing an expertise, I'm going to ask you, Next to your prescription pad, I want you to put the number for Clear Path Wellness because my sisters and I learned something. We learned that while we were separately healing, we each developed something, an inroad, but an inroad to ourselves and what we were missing was a fuller and bigger picture. And then we realized, whoa, we think we have something here. And let me tell you about days of healing. You can expect to be surrounded in a circle of safety. And we're going to move really slow. Because any kind of trauma takes your breath away. Whether it was one event or many events over time, your breath gets shallow. You don't realize it, it just happens. And you're breathing right to here. So we're gonna teach you how to take that full, deep breath and that satisfying exhalation. And then we're gonna teach you about Eden energy medicine because you've been poked at. And the field that you can actually touch has another field. So we're going to help you ground yourself with different techniques. 
You'll learn heart rhythm meditation, bringing yourself even closer to the language of the heart and what you need. And people who've experienced trauma, they're not in their bodies as much. Again, once or over a period of time, this became unsafe. So we're going to take you into some trauma-sensitive yoga. Go through some movements with your breath. Find those places that are stuck. You can expect that. And once we've built you up, once you've learned how to tend to and nurture yourself in this safe environment, if you like, you can experience something called psychodrama. Pick a moment in time. It could have been the event. It could have been something that happened after the event. One participant didn't want to spend too much time on her rape. She was very upset about what happened when she told the first person. That person said, well, that's not the worst thing that could have happened to you. She wanted that moment back. So with all of the grounding things that we learned, she went back to that moment. And we supported her. And she changed it. And she integrated something new, some new power. That's what you can expect at the Days of Healing. Wouldn't it be wonderful if I could give you my cue for music and roll credits and you could have the happily ever after? We need to define happily ever after. Let's redefine it because life continues to happen. And I've had moments where I was going to be hijacked by something else. And I kept practicing. Every morning, I practice. So in that moment, I can take that moment and pause and breathe and see that it's this moment with something else that might be alive. But I'll pay attention. We have a vision for everyone to come to the table at the same time. And all of us are going to ask, what is the best thing? How can we help this person who's experienced sexual trauma? I have a vision for a retreat home so you can leave your daily life for about a week. That's my vision now. When I was a little girl, I didn't have a vision. In fact, I really thought I was going to die. And it wasn't until I was older that I, res that I realized I was carrying, I don't want to live. But now, and at some point in time, I started asking, why not expect some joy? That seemed like a good thing. And while I was at it, why not reach back into the ancestry and heal that. At a point in time, I needed to look at the possibility of forgiving my dad. And I came across this beautiful, wrinkled, aged photo. And it was dad at about five, maybe six years old. And he was on his stoop. And he had his cowboy hat on. And he had his chaps with the little fringes. And he was holding something that I'm certain he believed was a horse. And then I thought, well, if I'm reaching to the past, what about right here? What about now? How can I help the generations right now? Why not think of that? And I found something that I laminated, and it stays with me. It says on one side, when you were a little girl, you wanted to become a special person. You are one. Happy 47th birthday. And on the other side, it says, to the best Nana in the world. I'm not going to let her down. And then I thought, it's time to bring everybody to the table. Why not bring yourself to this table? 
Start asking the question, how can I help? Let's work together to find the best answer to that question. Let's see if you can find your cartwheel. Why not? Love wins. Thank you.